Hi everybody, welcome to this Lightroom tutorial. Today we're going to have a look at a picture that's, well, let's just say it's one that at a first glance you would probably just bin. It's not particularly inspiring, there's uh, lots of bits of interference on here. Um, it's just generally not great. But rather than actually ditch your photos, sometimes if you just take a little bit of time, a little bit of thought, you can actually get something quite interesting out of them. Now looking at this photo, I'm not going to promise you that that's the case in this in this instance, but let's see how we can go. Now I'm going to do this a little bit ad hoc. I've got no plan here of, of what exactly I'm going to do, how I'm going to do it, so I'm just going to go with the flow. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the crop. Um, now on here you have this little padlock. Now this padlock, when it's undone, I can drag any way I like. When it's done up, if I grab a corner, it's always going to move, um, keeping it proportionally correct to the original. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to a 16 by 9 a pano, and I'm going to make that crop. Now the other thing I'll do, I'm going to look at some of these shadows. It is a little bit underexposed, a little bit shaddy, so I'm just going to lift it up a little bit and give it a brighter feel. I'm, ordinarily I would take the highlights down on this but I'm going to leave it for the time being and one of the first things I'm going to do, I'm just going to enable the lens correction and the chromatic aberration reduction because um, it does have a habit to change your picture a little bit and when you've got to the end of your edit and you realise you haven't done it and you click the lens correction it kind of messes everything up. Now it's a bit drab, it's not very summery, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the temperature first and I'm going to make that quite warm. Now I'm actually going to push the highlights up a little bit. I'm going to grab my white points. Now if I press and hold the Alt key whilst I move the white key, everything goes black. And you might wonder what's happening initially, but if you move your white points up, you'll see your clipping points. This is basically areas that have, have burnt out, there's no detail left. So what we do is we're essentially making a levels adjustment and we're bringing it to the point where the whites are just starting to clip. And I'm going to do exactly the same for the blacks. Just so it's starting to clip. Now I've done that, I'm going to increase the exposure again just a little bit. Now I'm going to grab a graduated filter. Now I want to try and mimic the sun coming from this top left hand corner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag a radial filter, sorry, a graduated filter, and I'm going to increase the warmth even more. And the other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to reduce the clarity. This has the effect of actually blurring the image, so it makes it look a little bit softer, a little bit more painterly. I'm going to make a new gradient tool and this one I'm going to follow on from the old one really and I'm going to do something very very similar with the colour but not quite as strong and the clarity I'm actually going to move up just ever so slightly now I'm going to take a brush tool and on the brush tool I'm going to add some contrast quite a bit of clarity. Left and right bracket keys to size your brush and I'm just going to paint over these seed heads to make them stand out just that little bit more. And I'm probably going to make sure I catch those small filaments just around the outside just so it's, it's adding a little something. Now you can add sharpness as well um, so I'm just going to try that as well see if it makes it stand out a little bit more. So we're getting there. Um, if I now press my backslash key on the keyboard, it will show you the before picture. If I press it again, it reverts to the after. So we are getting somewhere. I mean, this picture is never going to be good. You know, it's never going to be great. But it just goes to show what you can turn something which you would ordinarily delete into something that, you know, is, is better than it started. Let's put it that way. 
I'm going to grab another gradient filter. And this one I'm going to bring up from this bottom corner. And with this one I'm going to take the exposure down a touch. I'm going to increase the the contrast just a tiny amount and bring the clarity down. I'm going to create a new gradient and I'm going to bring this one down from the top again. And I'm going to increase the exposure just a little. Now I'm going to go back to my brush tool. And I just don't like the shadows in this these seed heads, they're still a bit too deep. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset this. Now you can just double click on the effect, the word effect at the top to reset all the points. Or if you've only just got one on there and you want to reset that particular one, you can double click on the beginning of each of the sliders to reset it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the slider for the shadows. Now that's probably a little too much. So what we'll do is we'll, we can always adjust this after. So we'll just bring that down a little bit. Once you're finished with a tool, if you click on the same tool again, it will disappear. Um, so if you select the gradient filter and you want to come off it, just select the gradient filter again. Um, so we are getting there. We do have the spot removal tool, um, which I could use on a, a few of these places. To be quite honest, I would normally go into Photoshop for any cloning and healing, but for the sake of this tutorial, we'll just do couple of changes. Okay. Now what I'm going to look at now is this section here. You've got your hue saturation levels, colour, and black and white. And I want to look at the colour section. We can change the luminance and the saturation and the hue within each of the colour ranges. So I'm just going to grab these and have a, a a quick play with them and see what it does. So on the luminance on that side, I quite like that. I think that adds a, a little something. Um, the yellows over here, I quite like. So I'm going to push that up a little bit. I think that looks kind of really abstract and fine art. Um, I quite like that. The greens, I don't know, they look uh, a little off, shall we say. So I'm going to look at the hue of those. If I can make them, if we go all the way down here, uh, we're making them kind of really dirty looking. Um, but if we take it towards the other end, you see they get really green looking. So. I think edging towards the yellow side actually offsets them a little bit better. And we can perhaps look at saturating them a little bit to get a bit of a difference in the picture. And last of all the luminance. You know, how bright do we want these to be? Obviously all the time you, you need to be looking for the noise that you're introducing in here. Because obviously the more you push and pull these sliders, the noisier the file is going to get. So, another little spot up there for the spot healing brush. And another one there, and another one there, and that'll do for now. There are lots of bits on here that we perhaps need to tidy up, and I would probably take this to Photoshop afterwards to do that. Um, but the last thing we're going to do is down to the bottom here 
noise reduction I generally use a setting of around about 25 to be honest I generally don't go over that um, sharpening 25 um, I would probably increase that to around about 43 but I'm going to hold down my alt key select masking now what we're doing is we're deciding what is and isn't sharpened the areas in black are not being sharpened the areas in white are so what I'm looking to do is I'm not looking to have massive amount of sharpening I just want it to affect the main subject in the center so I'm going to release the alt key now I go all the way down the bottom to effects I'm going to use a post crop vignette and I'm just going to put it in ever so slightly just to draw your eye away from the edge here so what have we ended up with let's press our backslash key see where we started and I press it again to where we are now like I said at the start this isn't a great picture um, I specifically picked a picture that was pretty bad just so we could see where you can get to within Lightroom now what I will do is I will save this whilst I'm here create a new preset and for the sake of, of the tutorial what I'm going to do is I'm gonna save all of these as a preset and I'm going to call this Summer Haze. I'll put this on the download page so you can download it and install it. A lot of these settings won't be relevant to you, the gradients may not be in the correct place but you can always go back into these things and move them about and change them. But this is going to give you a great start um, to try and recreate something very very similar. I'll also put a copy of this development setting and the original file used next to the video so if you're a BECC member you should be able to watch the tutorial download the file download the preset and recreate this for yourself thanks for watching I'll see you again next time